So you're wondering why I'm reviewing these miniatures even though I said specifically that I wouldn't be reviewing these miniatures. Well, there's really only one reason for that, and that's because I got a hell of an eBay sale. Now, myself, I think this whole thing with Magic the Gathering and D&D, it's just Hasbro or Wizards of the Coast saying they have an easily monetizable thing and another product which at first glance doesn't seem so monetizable. So they're just kind of combining them and hoping for the best. So, yeah, I don't know. The whole thing with pre-painted miniatures for me personally is that I like them because they represent actual D&D monsters and whatnot, and it's a convenience thing. So we'll just have to take a look at these miniatures together, and you can make up your own mind if you want to invest in this set. But bear in mind, I am not a fan of Magic the Gathering, so I'm just going to be looking at these miniatures in terms of use with D&D and other board games similar to that. I know a lot of other people have already done videos on these miniatures, but, you know, I got the really good deal on them, so why not? Why not? Let's just take a look at these miniatures together, shall we? What is a man but a miserable pile of miniatures? And this week I'm going to be taking a look at the Ravinica miniatures. First off, there's a lady warrior on a wolf. A very cool looking miniature. Certainly very useful for D&D. &D. Super happy with my first pull. Certainly a unique miniature. Next, a lizard man, or I'm not sure what this is in Magic of the Gathering. Apparently, but certainly would work great for a serpent man or lizard man. We have a nice assassin character here. Flowing robe. Certainly another miniature useful for D&D. &D. Doing well so far. We have a wizard! A bit goofy paint job on the face, but still, love that translucent staff. Not too dissatisfied with that. Got a nice little bit of terrain here, a statue. Very interesting. Like that as well. And we have a lovely bit of translucent effect on this sword here. It kind of looks like a paladin of some sort. Paint job is not too awful on that one. We have uh, something. Oh, this is a dryad. Oh, that's interesting. And we have an armored creature here. Obviously, a good stand-in for a Varrock or any number of uh, sort of uh, rideable beasts. Perhaps a wyvern, something like that. And what do we got here? We have a cleric-looking guy. This is very interesting. Uh, he's got an interesting sculpt. He's got a lot of stuff in there with his shield. That could be touched up a bit to be uh, made a little bit more apparent. A frontline medic. An interesting sculpt. Like that a lot. A very badly muddy looking fungus strooge. It kind of obscures the detail a little bit. A very, very bizarre miniature. Don't know what this is supposed to be. Obviously some sort of Magic the Gathering thing. Might be useful as a mutant miniature. And we have here some sort of ogre guy with chains. This would make a nice imposing chain devil for sure. Uh, we have a very badly painted, weirdly sculpted goblin. Interesting, but eh, I don't know if I could really use this for much. Certainly... During my years, I've uh, collected much nicer goblin miniatures. Even with... Uh, oh, skip to a electronic mage of some sort. A steampunky magic user. A lot of... Uh, a lot of clear translucent materials there. Uh, a centaur. Paint job is not very good. I liked what they were trying to go with on this one. I'm not sure if they could have just maybe made the sculpt just a little bit more simple so the paint job would be easier to do on that one. We have a little bit of a shrimpy giant here. Not very useful for D&D. &D. I mean, it's just... It could be like an armored ogre, I guess. But I don't know what else I would use him for. Uh, we have another lizard man guy. I like the little blade on their tail. That's a nice little effect. And we have an excellent looking noble vampire. Very useful miniature. I like vampires when they're set uh, in little poses here that aren't combat poses. 
I like that sculpt a lot. Paint job could be touched up, of course. Uh, and we have a spirit miniature. Obviously could use that for any number of undead. And we have a sphinx. But more of a techno-looking sphinx. Not your traditional sphinx. We have a floating vampire. I always like them in a little miniatures like this, which is, you know, they have a little flying effect for medium miniatures. That's always nice. I really like this one. Nice sculpt, very useful miniature. Uh, we have a very interesting looking sculpt here. Translucent guy. Very cool. A weird miniature. I know there's a uh, custom D&D &D monster that looks a lot like that. Uh, we have a little uh, cleric slash paladin miniature here. Nice pose. Paint job is not the greatest. Still pretty good. I like miniatures that have like cowls instead of stuff like that. We have an ogre miniature with some muddy details and some weird horns. I have several Dream Blade miniatures that would make better ogres than this, so not not that happy. And we have a lovely little wind drake. I have lots of different drakes that I would rather use instead of that one. We have a little bug guy here, which is very interesting. I'm not sure what I would use that miniature for, but I like the translucent wings. And we have a little guy here, goblin-sized, a cackler. Might make a nice magamum or some sort of little demon guy. Mm. With these small sculpts, they really got to be careful. Some sort of winged, like, not exactly sure what this creature is. Guy with a bendy hammer. You know, obviously you could you could touch this up with uh, lighter shades and pick out some details and fix the guy's face and whatnot. But the biggest issue with this is the sculpt itself had a huge mold line down the middle. I mean, it's fairly noticeable. I'm very sure this is not supposed to be part of the model. Bad paint jobs you could fix easily. I don't really want to go and then actually clean up mold lines on a pre-painted miniature. It's not uh, not something I want to do. We have here one of the miniatures I was looking forward to, the Angel of Death, or the Death Pact Angel, rather. Happy with this. Certainly very useful for D&D. &D. Clearly some, some mild issues with the face that could be touched up. I'm gonna get sick of saying the word touched up. A mutant creature here, medium creature. But, you know, I have plenty of more interesting mutants I could use rather than that one. And I got another floating vampire guy. Happy, happy with that because that was one of the miniatures that I really actually liked. And it was an interesting style of sculpt. And then finally we have this big old guy here. A big old lizard uh, with some armor on. So this is apparently some sort of sentient creature. Or at least a creature that people can try to armor. But it's a big old lizard guy. Certainly I could use him for something in D&D. So there you have it, folks. This was my pull. Certainly, I enjoyed the vampire miniatures the most, and some of the medium miniatures will be useful for D&D. &D. Am I going to buy any more of these? Probably not. Let me know what you think of this miniature set in the comments below. Are you going to buy it? Are you not going to buy it? Please let me know. And again, I will be doing more miniature reviews uh, if I can find good deals on them. Have a great day, and as always, thank you for watching the video.